in this lab session practically we are going to see what is standard access control list or standard ACL how to configure standard ACL and how it works okay if you are new to our channel please subscribe the channel to get the regular updates so before configuring or before getting into standard ACL let's discuss about or let's understand what is ACL okay let's have a basic overview about ACL ACL is an um, one of the important security features that's available in our layer 3 network and it's a set of rules that either permit or deny the traffic that passes through the router this is called ACL okay and um, when I say set of rules your pack your your traffic will be processed against all the rules not all the rules uh, in the list of rules one by one and if one rule matches the traffic then it will act accordingly or the operations will be performed accordingly what is mentioned in that particular rule and uh, no further rules are processed okay and if your traffic is not matched with any of your rule then your packet will be dropped because by default deny all or deny any would be the last rule for any acl configured so this is what ACL is and there are two types of ACL one is standard ACL which is very basics and the other one is extended ACL it's a kind of an advanced ACL we can say and standard ACL we can uh, write this access control list this policy based on only the source IP address of the traffic and uh, it's not limited to any service at all uh, but whereas in extended ACL we can uh, write a detailed uh, detailed rules and it works based on the combination of source address, destination address, port number, service, protocols, etc. So here in this video, we are going to concentrate only on standard access list. And in our next video, let's do about uh, extended access list. Okay. So before configuring it, uh, I'll explain my lab scenario here. I have uh, two routers and I have two different LANs that's connected to these routers. Okay. So in this lab for this lamp i have uh, used the subnet 192.168.10.0 slash 24 where uh, 10.1 and 10.2 is used for this pc usual mission and 10.100 is used as the gateway for this network okay as like the same 10.10.10.0 uh, slash 24 is used for this lamp and 10.10.10 uh, .10 is used for this pc and 10.10.10.2 it's used for a web server i have a web server in this network so I have configured uh, an IP 10 10 10 2 okay as like the same I have uh, 10 10 10 100 as the gateway for this LAN and for the WAN I have used 172.16.10.0 slash 30 okay so this is the subnet I have used in this network and uh, so uh, as I said uh, the standard access control list uh, is capable of doing uh, or uh, in the standard access control list we can write rules based on only the source ip address based on the source ip address a packet can be either permitted or denied okay so uh, what we are trying to achieve from this lab is <coughs> we are going to write an acl to allow or permit whenever a user from this machine 192.168.10.1 when he try to access uh, this server or this lan it should permit and if a user from 192.168.10.2 he tried to uh, reach us through this LAN or uh, this web server, it should deny. So this is the uh, ACL we are going to configure. And before that, there is one small limitation here uh, in the standard uh, ACL. As we said earlier, it can perform only based on the source IP address. Okay. And once if I permit any particular source IP address, that particular IP address uh, or that particular uh, uh, that particular uh, device it can be either uh, a particular i can allow an access to particular host or i can allow access to the entire subnet or entire network or a group of devices also but still it works based on the source ip address okay uh, maybe i can allow access only for this pc or i can allow access for some 10 to 20 pcs in this network or i can allow access for the entire uh, network from uh, all the net all the devices from this network okay so this is how I can write an ACL and once if I give, uh, once if I permit that particular host or uh, the network, whatever it is, if I permit, then the permitted host or the other, uh, you, uh, all the users in the network may have all the access. Okay. So it's not limited to any particular service. Say for example, in our scenario, as I said earlier, I'm going to write an uh, ACL to permit 192.168.10.1 this user to access this network right so once i permit this user to access this network he can 
access or uh, reach any of the devices or any of the service in this in this land or in this network okay uh, I, i'm having a web server here he can access it and uh, if you consider that if i'm having another ftp server he can access it or if i have some other server he, he can access it okay so this is the uh, small limitations in the standard access list whereas in the extended access list even we can precise it we can particularly mention that uh, this particular pc can access only the web server okay so whenever he is trying to access only the web server he can access but at the same time if he is trying to access some other ftp server in the lan or in the in this network it will not allow so uh, comparing to standard uh, that is the reason extended acl is a kind of an advanced acl okay but here now let's see how to configure a uh, standard access list and before that uh, in order to minimize your time i have just configured the ip addresses in this router pcs and everything and also i have configured a static ip route uh, static uh, uh, routing i have did a static routing to this network and also to this network from this router okay so i can show you i can show you so just to minimize the time i have configured the ip if you see that for uh, gigabit ethernet 00 for this interface i have configured 172.16 10.1 and for this interface i have configured 192.168 10.100 which is nothing but the gateway for this network okay and at the same time i have also configured static route because in packet tracer this pipeline filter will not work okay so if you see that i have configured a static route saying that whenever you want to access uh, or reach the 10 network which is nothing but the lan network of here you should the next hop should be the 172.16.10.2 so the static routing have configured so with the static routing this routes are learned 10 network it's learned okay and as like the same in this router also i have configured the ip address if you see for in this interface i have configured 172.16.10.2 and for this interface i have configured 10 10 10 100 just like the same here also i have configured static code is the uh, 192.168.10 10 network this network is linked to the static code okay so it's just to minimize your time not to waste your time i have configured the ip address and configured the static ip and also here i have a web server uh, configured here i can show you how to configure that okay the first foremost thing just go to desktop as like how you configure for a pc uh, how you configure ip for a pc uh, so we need to configure ip address here we need to fill it i given 10 10 10 2 as the ip address for the server and once you configure the ip then go to service and uh, go to dns uh, by default it will be off you can on it and uh, i don't want to give any domain name uh, i don't want to give any name here so that i am simply i'm going to use the ip address of the server to reach access okay so i have given the ip address here as a name and address also here as the name and created a record and if you want to have a name you can have it but i am using the ip address okay so now we have created a dns then you need to go to the http service and by default uh, it would be off both and uh, i have enabled http and https on both okay and uh, these are the default configurations uh, default web page configuration is configured here okay i'm not making any change if you record if you want to have it yes you can have it you can edit it uh, you can go here and you can edit it your html okay and save the configuration that's it so this is the very basic uh, web server configuration that's it okay let's see how to configure acl and before configuring acl two things we need to make sure that uh, whenever you are going to configure standard acl the standard acl should be recommended to configure near the destination end okay near close to the destination not from the source so as i am going to write a standard acl i i need to configure near the destination okay and uh, on creating a, or configuring the acl one thing is first of all we need to create a list of acls a list of rules that's the first point and the second point once the list of rules are created it need to be uh, applied on the router interface either it can be an in inbound or an outbound when i say inbound uh, for this particular interface uh, if a traffic comes this way it is outbound and when the traffic comes from this way it is an inbound okay this is what inbound and outbound means 
and once the acl is created it need to be applied in the interface and need, we need to mention where it need to be applied whether the incoming traffic or in the outcoming traffic the inbound or an outbound that need to be mentioned okay so the scenario is as i said earlier uh, i should allow a permit a traffic or request whenever this user from 192.168.10.1 trying to access this network it should be allowed and whenever uh, this user is trying to access it should deny okay so for that what i need to do i need to write this acl in the near to the destination right so this is this router is the closest to destination so i am going to this router configure terminal and i am going to create an access list so access list and i need to mention whether it is a standard access list or access extended access list so if you even if you put a question mark you can see uh, it shows extended and standard right so the syntax is ip this access list and now i am going to configure standard okay once you put standard again it will ask for uh, whether are you going to give by uh, name <coughs> or by number okay uh, if you give by name uh, you can also give by name also and number also uh, the range from 1 to 99 is considered as the standard acl which works based on the source ip address okay if we give any number from 1 to 99 say for example let me take 10 so if you take 10, the router will understand that it is a standard ACL and it will perform based on only the source IP address. Okay. So now what I need to do, I need to permit whenever a traffic comes from this user, right? So uh, it can be based on the requirement. Okay. So here I want to uh, permit only this user and at the same time I can also write an ACL to allow uh, entire subnet also. Here I am going to permit 192.168 dot 10 dot 1 okay and uh, in my requirement i am going to permit only this host or this user not the network right so i am going to specify the wildcard mask of this 0 dot 0 dot 0 dot 0 so wildcard mask is nothing but the inverse of subnet mask so instead of putting subnet mask 255 255 i am doing 0 dot 0 dot 0 dot 0 because acl will work on wildcard mask okay so i am permitted this host okay and uh, you can also write a deny policy to this pc okay so whenever a traffic comes this will be denied but by default as i said earlier by default at the end of the acl implicit deny would be the uh, default policy or default rule okay so if, if you are not writing any permit then by default it will be denied so i am not writing any deny policy for this user the default it will be denied because deny all is the last rule of any ACL which is created. Maybe it is not showed there when you are seeing it, but by default deny all is the last rule of any ACL created. So now ACL is created. Okay, ACL 10 we have created standard ACL 10 is created and there we have permitted this user. Okay, now what we need to do? We need to apply that in the router interface gigabit Ethernet. 0 slash 1 okay because it this interface is close to the destination right okay so ip again here i'm going to apply ip access group then here put question mark so we created a standard access list name 10 sorry number is 10 and again it will ask whether it is an inbound or outbound so as said earlier inbound is something when a traffic comes from this way and outbound is something when a traffic comes this way okay so now we are going to deny a, or a permit a packet when it is coming from uh, this network to this network right so it is an outbound traffic so when a, when a traffic comes outbound with this interface i need to uh, either permit this guy or deny some other feature so i am putting here this outbound also, we can see how many hits we are getting to this particular ACL. Okay. okay, let me do. Okay, we can do directly. I'm opening this user. You see, I'm opening this user from the command prompt. Ping 10 dot 10 dot 10 dot 1. So from this user, I'm trying to access 
uh, ping this user, okay, this LAN, this device in the LAN. And also let me try to reach the web server. It is reachable if you see from this PC, 192.168.10.1, I'm trying to ping the web server. Let me also check the web services. So in the URL, I'm accessing 10.10.10.2, okay. From this PC, I'm giving the IP address of this. See, uh, this is the default uh, configurations, web page configurations, which is I, which I showed earlier in this particular web page. So now, uh, web service is working good when I'm trying to access from this PC to this web server. Okay. At the same time, we were able to access this PC also. So as per the requirement, now this PC is communicating to this network. Now let's see what happens if I try to reach from this PC. Okay. Because I have never written any rule to allow this user, right? So ping, ping, 10.10.10.1, see? So from this PC, I'm trying to reach this PC, it is not allowed because it's getting denied or dropped here because we don't have any rule to allow this particular users or a host traffic to access this network okay also let me try to reach the web server 10.10.10.2 see it's not allowed when we try it from this user or this pc in the same lan it's allowed but here uh, when we are trying to reach the uh, same destination from the other source the same network it is not working okay and also let's try to access the web browser let's try to access this web server 10.10.10.2 it will not open see so when we tried from here immediately that uh, default web page is code default web page came right but see now we are getting request time out so this is how acl helps uh, in denying the unauthorized access okay and we can also check from this router how many hits we have received to this particular traffic show ip access list 10 okay because 10 is the access list which created right so if you see for permit host 13 matches it hits because 13 request was initiated from this particular source to this destination if in case we explicitly uh, we uh, write one more rule to deny this PC also by default it get denied because uh, as I said earlier deny all is the last statement or last last rule of all the ACL packets. Okay, if in case even if we um, explicitly uh, write a rule to deny this particular user also we will be seeing how many hits were hitted to that particular rule. So this is how uh, standard ACL works. When I say standard ACL, as I said earlier, standard ACL works based on only the source IP address. And once the access is permitted, it is common to all the service and it, it's not uh, a service specific. Once the request or once the um, request is permitted, access is permitted, then you can access whatever service available in the network. Okay. Whereas in the extended access list, we can also um, restrict or we can uh, we can provide the access based on the service okay so this is the small limitation of the standard access list thank you for watching the video hope it is useful please subscribe the channel for the regular updates and share with your friends and if there is any queries please ask in the comment box thank you for watching the video